Hello Internets, Jesse McDougall here uh, with a book review today. Uh, it is Spirit Animals, Meanings and Stories. And no, I didn't put on this shirt so I look good for the audience or good for the Internet. I'm actually going to a funeral this morning. Um, uh, 93-year-old gentleman, I believe, uh, recently passed away. It came out of kind of a surprise. He was a World War II vet. And I actually got to speak with him last year and spent some time with him. And I was asking him about what it was like in the time of war, right? This is like a World War II vet. And if anyone follows my book reviews, you can tell I'm a huge history buff over the last, you know, six years, five years. And uh, so to be able to talk to someone, instead of reading about what's in a book, I get to talk to someone who experienced World War II. It's kind of a valuable conversation, wouldn't you say? Um, yeah, so it was pretty interesting. He was telling me about, uh, I asked him, I because I, I was asking him questions, then when I asked him, you know, what does it feel like to be chased, you know, be hunted by a submarine while you're on a battleship? And I could tell I struck a chord with him, and he looked at me. Like, and he just, I felt like we just connected, and uh, yeah, he knew that there was something different to me. Um, one cool thing is like, you know, I asked him about when he was going to war in Canada, what, like, why'd you go to war? He's like, it's just what you did. Everybody went to war. You got to defend the country, protect the world, stuff like that. So that was very, um, that was very, uh, heroic and patriotic, which I really, really admired. Um, so rest in peace, peace, Archie. He's a great guy. And we'll move on with this spirit animals book. Okay. So I got this book in Kenora, Ontario, and I was driving, back to Vancouver to move and uh, like in Tools of the Titans by Tim Ferriss like they joke in there he, he's kind of like joking about spirit animals um, I don't know what the deal is with that like this is like native religion there's a lot of people that there's a lot of wisdom in animals and stuff and it's you know I'm a believer it's I it's not fake you can you can observe something and learn something right so they, in Tools of the Titans, they always ask what the spirit animal is. And I do all these other tests and stuff. And when I hire people, I make them do personality tests and spirit animal tests. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of meaning. And I just enjoy learning. So this is like a little kid's book. But it's great. It's just so short. It covers, like, the crow. The crow is a pretty interesting uh, creature. Uh, let's see here. I'll read some cool stuff. I'm not going to read the whole story. Let's see. Yeah, this is a good book, man. I really advise buying this book. It's just, it's good for the imagination. Covers the eagle. Uh, actually, let's read this. I'm going to read you the crow. I'll tell you all the animals in here. And I'll read you the crow story, and then I'll just probably wrap it up here unless I see a sweet animal I want to read. Oh, the fox. The fox is good. Okay, so it breaks it down into elements. So the first one is air. Crow, eagle, owl, raven. The next one is earth, bear, buffalo, cougar, coyote, deer, dog, horse, polar bear, spider, wolf, water, beaver, duck, muskrat, orca, salmon, turtle. Turtle is an interesting one. Let's read the turtle. Just because I feel like being random and doing a book review before the funeral. Uh, well, that's why you don't know how long you're going to have in this life, man. So just be productive and just, you know, just keep doing what you want to do. Don't do what you don't want to do. Unless you have to do what you don't want to do to achieve a future goal that's going to be a long-term successful plan, which I did, got my chartered accountant designation, my CPA designation. That set me up for the rest of my life and was, I was able to retire at the age of 31 uh, to do whatever I want with the rest of my time in my life. So for me, yeah, that's success. Um, turtle. Turtles, especially in North America species, are small reptiles. They are shy and not known as great hunters. They may live for more than a hundred years, but they live quietly. Even though they are air breathing animals, most of their time is spent underwater. Because of the turtle's quiet nature, one may think it is not a strong spirit animal, but turtles have a very special place in the lives of many indigenous people. Yeah, so this is like an indigenous book from I think from the Cree uh, tribe. <clears throat> So this is their belief system. From, 
Cree to Blackfoot and Iroquois to Lenape and many other cultures, the turtle is a major character in the creation of stories. These stories usually begin after a great flood and after the creator became angry with the people of the world. Because the turtle can swim, it does not die in the flood. Its hard shell and broad back becomes a raft for the animals that survived the flood. The stories often include another character with magical powers, a trickster or a cultural hero using dirt taken from the sea floor. The trickster slash hero rebuilds the earth on the back of the turtle. That is why many native peoples in North America is called Turtle Island. <clears throat> oh, that is why many native peoples <clears throat> call North America Turtle Island. Didn't know that. Uh, because many people leave the world was built on the back of a turtle. This is this animal reflects the respect for Mother Earth. The turtle respects peace with Mother Earth and its and all its inhabitants. If you follow the turtle as a spirit animal, you have a deep connection with Mother Earth. You may have hidden strength not noticed by others, but it is there. Also, the turtle is connected to the to healing and protection. If you follow the turtle spirit animal, you move at your own pace. Not ignorant of others and their needs, but with focus, most people will see that and not try to rush you. They know you're on task and always deliver. That's pretty cool. I like that. That's kind of my approach right now that I'm taking with my objectives, with my businesses. I did the whole year. I did, you know, two or three years of like rush, 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 and grind, grind. Yeah, spend tons of money, just throw money at something and let's see what happens. Like, no, man, I'm going to move slow. One thing at a time, every day, a couple things, a couple things, a couple things. And I've defined my big end goal. And I'm re-engineering the processes and I'm, you know, going, going, going long term, enjoying the journey, not getting stressed off because I'm not a multi-millionaire right away. Um, and realize it does take time. The turtle lives its own life quietly doing what it needs to do without feeling the pressure to move faster. That is awesome. The turtle is one of the most honored creatures, not just by, by Aboriginal peoples, but also by other cultures. The Chinese and Hindu also see the world being cared, carried on its strong back. Always remember, you live on Turtle Island. That's pretty cool. I think that's a cool story. So whether if you're eight years old, 10 years old, 20, 30, 40, 50, for me, there was value in that story. Move at your own pace, your own time. Hmm. And there you are. Now we're going to read the crow because I just love the crow and I actually train crows. I have like a legit, a few pet crows that are like, I have actual relationships with me. They come pretty close up now and it's pretty cool. They fly right in front of my window here and get walnuts that I leave out for them. It's pretty sweet. I whistle at them, they'll fly right over. It's, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Uh, crow. Crows are smart. They are tricksters, intelligent, but keen to have fun tricking people and other animals. This is not seen as a bad thing. Some of the most important spirit animals are tricksters. They are the cultural heroes of many nations in North America. Crows begin in Central Asia, then move into North America and the rest of the world. They are adaptable creatures that eat a wide variety of foods, including insects, smaller birds, fish, fruits, and vegetables, and carrion, carrion, dead animals. Crows, they're scavengers. Crows can be trained to count, use tools, recognize themselves in mirrors, and tell humans apart by their facial features. They are observant and learn by watching and predicting what will happen next. The crow's intelligence and observation skills are important in stories about crows and what they mean. They also, they may also be why native people view the bird as a trickster. If you come across a crow or feel the need to follow one, there may be a shifting happening in your life. Be willing and ready to accept the change. The change can be good or it may be a difficult adjustment. You may need to take action. If you adapt, you will survive and push through the difficult time. The appearance of a crow in your life may be in a dream, may also mean that you are about to be tricked or fooled. Be on guard, or perhaps you are getting signs from other spirits, but you haven't been able to figure out the meaning of these signs. The crow's appearance in your life 
may help you discover the truth. Okay, so now we're talking about spirituality stuff. Um, you know, uh, other spiritual realms do exist. So my audience listening to this, we're going to have a common ground there. And if we don't have a common ground, just hear what I have to say. And that's fine if you don't agree with me or not. But I'm beyond the doubt that other spiritual realms exist. It's just, it's just, it just does exist. So get over it. Um, nobody has all the answers and stuff. And I don't know. It's just the path of seeking wisdom and stuff. But um, yeah, uh, from a Christian fellow, a few Christian people, the the crows kind of like it can guide you on the good path or the, the bad path. So just recognizing if the crow is appearing in your life, there's probably something that you just keep recurring, seeing a crow in front of you, see have this, have this kind of like experience with like, whoa, this crow is like right here. Like, you know, there's probably something else going on in your life that you, you can get value out of. You sit down and relax and think about what's really going on. Um, and so what this is saying is to uh, just be willing to change and go with the change. Just be aware if you're going to be going down a bad path or down a good path. It's very easy to go down a bad path. It's very tempting of the devil, but sticking to the righteousness path, being a good person, um, you want to stick to that path. And to be honest, it's harder. It's harder to be, I've, I found, just because there's so much temptation in Western uh, society. Um, but I want to read, uh, so we're not done the crow, I got another page here, because it's a pretty cool story. I like this one. Uh, before the crow lived on the earth, it's called the, the rainbow crow, Lenape. Before Lenape lived on earth, the weather was warm and the animals were happy. One day snow covered the earth and the world became cold. The, animal be the animals became worried. They decided to send someone to Kishnalamanak, the creator, to ask him to stop the snow. I will go, said a voice from above. It was the rainbow crow, the brightest and most colorful, colorful bird of all. The rainbow crow was smart and could sing beautiful songs in a lovely voice. The perfect voice. The rainbow crow flew high above the earth for three days, past the winds and clouds, past the moon and stars, to the home of the creator. But the creator was too busy to notice him. The crow sang a beautiful song. What a wonderful gift of song, the creator said finally. In return, I will give you what you want. The rainbow crow asked the creator to stop the snow. I cannot, replied the creator. The snow has a spirit of its own. Then please will you make it warm again, pleaded the rainbow crow. One day will, one day will but not for many months. <clears throat> How will the animals stay warm, the rainbow crow asked. All I can do is give you this. The creator picked up a long stick and poked it into the sun. The stick caught fire and gave off great heat. Fire will keep you warm, but I will give you this only once. Hurry back to earth before the flame goes out. The rainbow crow flew back to earth carrying the fire on the stick. On the first day, sparks from the fire burned the crow's tail feathers. On the second day, the soot from the flame turned the rainbow crow's feather black. On the third day, the smoke and ash blew into the crow's mouth so the crow could only make a caw-caw sound. The crow reached the earth. The heat from the fire melted the snow, warming the other animals. And so the world received fire. Everyone gave thanks to the rainbow crow. But the crow's feathers had turned black, and he could no longer sing. The crow was sad and began to cry. The creator heard the crying and told the crow not to worry. Soon man will come to earth. He will become the master of you all, except you. Man will never hurt you because your meat tastes like fire and smoke. He will never capture you because you no longer have a beautiful voice. Your feathers will have no value because they are all black. But in the black of your feathers, all the colors will be seen. The crow will always be free. I don't know about you, but I think that's a pretty cool freaking story. So when you look at a crow, what do you see? You see black, right? But if you were to hold a crow's feather up to your eyes, you're going to see all the colors of the rainbow. The illusionist. And that's where the trickster comes from. Mic drop. I'm out. All right. Have a great day. Take care.